10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. And lift off. Pupils pitching downrange. Plus 40 seconds into flight, and Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying our stack of Starlink satellites to orbit. We're now throttling down our engines in preparation for max Q, which is maximum aerodynamic pressure. This is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees on ascent. We've got an awesome, supersonic. awesome view of first stage of a Falcon 9 there on your screen. Max Q. There's that call out that we've passed through Max Q. Now in about a minute, we'll have three events happening within seconds of each other. The first will be main engine cutoff or what we call Miko, followed by stage separation and SES one or second engine start one. Now Miko is where we shut down all nine of the M1D engines on the first stage to slow the vehicle down in preparation for in preparation for stage separation. And stage separation is where the first stage separates from the second stage. Vehicle is following a nominal trajectory. Good call outs there. Uh, first stage will then make its way back to Earth and attempt to land on our drone ship, just read the instructions, while stage two continues its journey with the third event being second engine start one. And that's where we light up that MVAC engine and it will propel the second stage with our Starlink satellites to orbit. Now we're just about 10 seconds or so away from those three events. That is Miko, stage separation and SES-1. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. MVAC ignition. And there we just had Miko and stage separation. On your right hand screen, you're looking at that MVAC engine on the second stage, confirming SES-1. And a good call out that stage two Both is nominal. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. Both vehicles are nominal. Air separation confirmed. And there you can see on your screen the fairing halves have been deployed. They are now making their way back to Earth. And as a reminder, we will be attempting to recover the fairing halves today with our recovery ships Go Searcher and Go Navigator. All right, as stage two heads towards its targeted drop-off orbit, stage one will execute two burns in order to make its way back to Earth. The first is the entry burn, where three of the Merlin-1D engines will reignite, and this helps slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. The second burn is the landing burn, and this is a single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship. We're about T plus four minutes into flight, and if you're just catching up with us, we had a successful launch of Falcon 9 from Cape Canaveral, a Space Launch Complex 40. If you're looking at a live view of the Falcon 9 Stage 2 as it delivers our Starlink payload to orbit. Stage 1 is cruising back to our drone ship, just read the instructions in the Atlantic Ocean. We'll continue to watch stage two here on a nominal ascent for a few minutes. 
Um, as a reminder, the Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level, and these achieve around 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent. The MVAC engine is optimized for vacuum and achieves about 220,500 pounds of thrust on the single engine. The Starlink constellation is in low Earth orbit, or LEO, at around 550 kilometers. Now, most geostationary satellites uh, are at 1,000 kilometers altitude, and these are the general satellites that we see uh, in most other systems. When the satellites are farther from Earth, the round-trip data time between the user and the satellite, also known as latency, is much higher, resulting in poorer performance for activities like video calls and gaming. We're about 30 seconds out here from entry burn. As a reminder, Falcon 9 is equipped with four hypersonic grid fins positioned near the top of the first stage on stage one, using nothing but, uh, excuse me, that guide it back during its re-entry uh, to the ground. Stage one, entry burn startup. And there we go, we have entry burn start. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. Beautiful, and entry burn cut off. Stage one is going to continue its descent to our drone ship. Just read the instructions. As stage one continues to uh, descend, it uses occasional bursts of nitrogen gas also for attitude control. One. And sometimes you can see this, uh, although in the darkest night, we, uh, we may not be able to. To land, the Falcon 9 first stage is also equipped with four landing legs made of state-of-the-art carbon fiber and aluminum honeycomb. These are placed symmetrically around the base of the rocket and deployed just prior to landing. After first stage landing, stage two has a coast phase, then a short burn, and then another coast phase before deploying the satellites. We are about 30 seconds out from landing burn. Stage one landing burn. 10 seconds out. We may see a video cut out here. Stage one landing leg deploy. All right, and there you can see we've landed first stage on our drone ship. Uh, just read the instructions. This marks our 76th recovery of an orbital class rocket and the sixth recovery for this particular booster. Seco. And we've had second engine cut off one. Also signal stage two from the Cape as expected. And we confirmed good orbit. All right, now stage two is going to coast for this orbit uh, in the next 35 minutes or so. While that happens, take a look at this animation showcasing where we are in the coast phase. We'll see you back here in about T plus 45 minutes for a second stage relight.
Welcome back to the webcast for our 21st Starlink mission from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. So far, we had an on-time liftoff at 3.13 a.m. Eastern Time. Stage 1 came back to land on Just Read the Instructions. That is our 76th recovery of a booster. Now we're waiting on SES-2 coming up here, which is second engine start two. And this will be a very short, quick burn, just about one second, but it will take us to our final drop-off orbit. And there you could see it was a very, very quick burn. We did have SES-2 and SECO-2. We had a call out. Nominal orbit insertion. There we go. Call out for good burn and a call out for a good nominal insertion. Again, our Starlink sats will ultimately end up in a LEO or low Earth orbit around 550 kilometers above Earth's surface, which is different than your typical geostationary or geosat, which orbits roughly 36,000 kilometers above Earth. We have another 15 minute coast phase before we deploy our next batch of Starlink satellites into orbit. And during this time, the spacecraft will start to spin along its central axis, giving the Starlink satellites the momentum that they need to space themselves out over time after they deploy. While this happens, sit back and enjoy some more Space Jams. We'll see you back here Plus at... Signal Diego Garcia expected. We'll see you back here at T plus one hour and four minutes. Welcome back to our webcast for Starlink. We had an on-time liftoff this morning. Our first stage booster landed for its sixth time in our 76th recovery overall. Stage two completed its two burns, and now we are coming up on the deployment of our Starlink satellites. We have a good, nice live view there on your screen, so we should see these deploy here shortly. We've got the sun beaming there in the background. Just about 10 seconds away from payload deploy. Payload deployed. Now you can see those Starlink satellites out in space drifting away from second stage. As a reminder, this is just their drop-off orbit. Shortly, they will deploy their solar array, and over the next few days and weeks, they will distance themselves from each other and use their onboard ion thrusters to make their way to their operational orbit. And that brings our webcast to a close. Thank you to the range and the FAA for supporting today's mission. If you're interested in Starlink service, head over to starlink.com and sign up. Thanks again for joining us, and have a good morning.